This brings me <clears throat> to the third incompatibility, democracy itself. I think the problem was best stated by Robert Lind, referencing America in the foreword of a book written in 1943 called Business as a System of Power. Thus, political equality under the ballot was granted on the unstated but factually double-blocked assumption that the people must refrain from seeking the extension of that equality to the economic sphere. In short, the attempted harmonious marriage of democracy to capitalism doomed genuine popular control from the start. And all down to our national life, the continuance of the union has depended upon the unstated condition that the dominant member, capital, continue to provide returns to all elements in democratic society sufficient to disguise the underlying conflict and interests. This crisis within the economic relations of capitalism was bound to precipitate a crisis in the democratic political system. One of the most interesting cultural biases we see in our society is that while the vast majority continue to you know, clamor for general equality, general race equality, creed equality, and so on, it's been a general trend. Most people agree with this kind of thing. Everyone seems to stop short when demanding anything along the lines of economic equality. Have you noticed this? While it is a fundamental value of democratic society with its basis in civil and human rights, people have been persuaded that economic equality is just off limits and somehow morally wrong. And to promote such a thing means paradoxically, you must hate freedom, maybe be a communist. This social psychology, born from years of pro-business, pro-slavery, pro-inequality propaganda, has had a powerful effect. And the truth is, there is basically no real civil equality in society without economic equality. You are only as free as your purchasing power will allow you to be. And the very fact that it is blatantly obvious, globally, beyond any doubt, that business runs government, or better yet, business is government, should be a signpost that capitalist societies gravitate constantly and consistently, even though it gets pushed back by forces that are trying to look, look forward, gravitates constantly and consistently towards something called fascism. What is a business model? It's a top-down dictatorial structure where the boss or the owner imposes directives while employees abide. Top-down control, bottom-up responsibility. And to think this dominant structure that is the root of basically the, the degree of survival and public health that we have would not carry over into the realm of the so-called democratic process is, is insanely absurd and naive. A detailed 2014 study conducted by Professor Martin Gillins of Princeton and Benjamin Page of Northwestern University concluded that, unsurprisingly, the preferences of the average American appear to have only a minuscule, near zero, statistically non-significant impact upon public policy. The researchers concluded that lawmakers' actions tend to support the interests of the wealthy, Wall Street, and big corporations. In fact, if we're to be consistent as a society, it's actually quite poor form to object to money power being in control at all. We should let the Koch brothers buy and run America. Why not? It is the purest and most natural outcome in a system where everything is for sale. To assume government would be off limits or not used for the differential advantage of big business, as, as though some kind of moral superiority is going to transcend the social psychology and incentives, is completely delusional as far as I'm concerned. Get money out of politics, they said. 